Now, according to Shanta Devarajan, the World Bank's chief economist for Africa, the broad picture emerging from the data is that Africa's economies have been expanding robustly and that poverty is coming down. And a McKinsey Global Institute report has estimated that by 2020, Africa's GDP will collectively reach $2.6 trillion. For a closer look at these numbers, how they're collated and how they're interpreted, I'm joined in studio by Azar Jameen, chief economist at Econometrics. Azar, thank you so much for joining us. Good now, evening. very interestingly, I came across a piece yesterday saying that 20 years ago, South Africa was seven and a half times bigger than Nigeria in terms of GDP, and today is only one and a half times bigger than Nigeria. And yet, just yesterday, we could also report this as the World Bank and the IMF are supporting the rebasing of the GDP forecast for Nigeria. Now, in light of these two scenarios, is GDP still a relevant measure of economic activity on the ground? I think one needs to be very careful about assuming that GDP alone is the appropriate measure of economic activity. Uh, the reason why Nigeria's GDP is now has improved so dramatically is largely because of the huge increase in the price of crude oil right. and the fact that Nigeria, I think, is now the seventh largest oil producer in the world. Um, it doesn't necessarily tell you uh, all that much about what's going on with the average Nigerian right. or for that matter with the average South African. And the classic example here in South Africa is when people keep talking about the fact that these strikes are going to cause job losses and that therefore people who would have spent money will no longer be spending money. The fact is that most job losses in this country do not really affect economic activity all that much because uh, so many of the job losses are focused on the poorer sections of the community mm -hmm. that do not contribute all that much to the overall economy. There's two more scenarios I want to put on the table. The first is that, of course, we saw South Africa's second quarter GDP numbers coming up today, and there's been a lot of excitement that the economy has come up from 0.9% to 3%. And then yesterday, we also heard that uh, Ethiopia had forecast for itself a 10% GDP growth rate, and uh, the World Bank has come down and said, no, maybe it's not 10%, it's actually 7% that you should be forecasting. And what this raises for me is the credibility of the process about how do you actually get to that number. Now, first of all, you've got to be very careful in interpreting these figures. Uh, the figures that you've quoted are quarter on quarter. Mm. They are not year, year, on, year on year. If you look at the year on year figures, actually South Africa's growth slowed slightly in the second quarter from one9 to 1.8 percent and some would argue that that's a more accurate reflection of what happened. The reason why you got the sudden jump is because the first quarter figures were artificially depressed by the fact that there were effectively three fewer working days due to the timing of Easter, due to the absence of a leap year mm. and due to the timing of the public holiday than they were in the first quarter of last year. So two weeks ago, Bill Gates writes an article, and I quote, he says, I have long believed that GDP underestates growth, even in rich countries where its measurement is quite sophisticated. Now, I'm not really sure whether to take this with a pinch of salt, because here's a philanthropist who's trying to make up his mind about where to direct his billions, or whether there is actually a case for questioning um, the, the credibility of the numbers. If we look at, for example, the different uh, rankings or different systems, one would find there's a report that says Liberia, for example, is the second poorest country in Africa. Another one that says Liberia is the seventh poorest. And another that says Liberia is the 22nd poorest. Now, if I was Bill Gates, where do I direct my money? Which, which report do I trust? Well, you've got to basically look and analyze all the reports. There is one basic uh, second w way of measuring GDP, and that is not just in terms of dollars, but in terms of purchasing power parity. And for example, you could argue that with one dollar you can buy far more in South Africa right. than with the same dollar you could buy in the United States. Kind of a Big Mac idea. And if you use, uh, apply GDP in those terms, then you get a completely different ranking right. uh, in terms of, and you'll find that some economies that look quite small are actually quite big. Uh, China has been a classic example of that for many years, except it's grown b big even in purchasing power parity terms now. But there are others that uh, uh, where there are huge distortions. If we look, for example, at the political underpinnings, I mean, we know that uh, sometimes uh, economic 
prowess translates into the political sphere. If we look at South Africa on the continent, South Africa is seen as the big brother because it's got the biggest uh, economy on the continent. But again, if we, if we take these stats that Nigeria is set to overtake South Africa and possibly knock South Africa out of the G20, are countries likely to always give us an accurate reflection of their GDP strength or are they even likely to overplay it sometimes? I think that that's a huge risk and there's a risk that they'll overplay it and uh, clearly South Africa is facing some political tensions with Nigeria in years to come in terms of who takes the leadership role in the African continent. But uh, they've also got to realize that the structure of the economies are completely different and that in some respect South Africa may be punching far more than its full weight. Firstly, because its financial sector is a lot stronger than that of Nigeria. Secondly, because of the structure of its economy. A classic example that I read is, for example, in South Africa, the ratio of new car sales to used car sales is about six to four. Right. Uh, in Nigeria, it's one to 10. So uh, in other words, most of the cars in Nigeria that are bought are used cars. Now. Does that mean you yeah. need to give Nigeria proportionately bigger political weighting when South Africa is the more fundamental producer at source? Thank you so much for making the time to join us. Of course, that was Azar Jameen, the chief economist at Econometrics. And that, unfortunately, does bring us to the end of Beyond Markets tonight. Thank you for joining us. But do remember that you can stay engaged by following us on Twitter by hashtagging Beyond Markets or following me at Nozi Pumbandu. Remember, you can also catch your favorite interviews at abndigital.com. From me, it's goodbye. <laughs>